Welcome everybody. In this video, I wanted to give you a little bit of a sense of what the rest of our semester is going to look like. I'm going to talk about some discrete math, I'm going to talk about the structure of our course, and a little bit about how to succeed in the context of this online course. So first up, what's discrete math anyways? I like to think of it as a wonderful introduction into mathematical thinking. Indeed, we're going to learn how to think logically, to think rigorously, to think symbolically, and also to think creatively, which might seem like his intention with those other things, but I don't believe that's the case. And indeed, in my background, I actually started university in computer science, and then I took a discrete math course, and I kind of fell in love with mathematics and mathematical thinking, and, well, here I am now as a mathematics professor, and I was taken to the dark side. But discrete mathematics takes this sort of set of skills, and it applies it to a kind of math problem that's particularly useful for people in computer science and people in information technology. And the idea of discrete mathematics is in contrast to the kind of sort of continuous mathematics that some of you might have seen in high school or if you ever took a pre-calculus or a calculus class, where, for instance, if you consider the function x squared, that when you think about this, in the past we've often thought of it where you're allowed any real number x could be the input. Not just one and two, but a half and a third and a quarter and pi and root two and all sorts of things. Sort of continuous number line of possible inputs. In discrete mathematics, we try to think of the basic entities that we're going to talk about as sort of separate things. Like one and two are separate and they're not connected by the whole set of numbers in between them. We might be interested, for instance, only in the integers, numbers like one, two, three, four, but not necessarily all real numbers, the numbers in between it. Now, the reason why discrete mathematics is so important in computer science and information technology is that's how a lot of information technology stuff works. For example, if you have a database, you have just discrete entries, and they might have a bunch of different properties, but you usually don't have sort of a notion of one-third of the way between two different entries in a database. And so in this course, we're going to do all sorts of different things. We're going to do probability, we're going to be doing counting, we're going to try to get to a little bit of graph theory, we're just going to do some basic logic stuff at the beginning of the course so that we feel empowered with our logic, and all these different things that are going to have a lot of application throughout computer science and information technology. Now, this is an online course, and, and online courses can be kind of challenging for students because you don't have that constant, continuous structure of you got to go to class and you have this sort of social pressure to show up and do whatever the teacher is doing. In, in an online course, a lot more of that momentum is going to come from you. So I'm going to give you just a little bit of the scaffolding that I'm going to use in this course that I'm hoping that you can use to master your learning of discrete mathematics. So the first part, and you've probably already seen one of these, is the online video and quiz modules. And you should think of this as sort of the foundational knowledge. This is us establishing the basic idea of whatever section we're going to be doing, but it is absolutely not in learning the material to mastery. That is for, something for you to do. You have to take the sort of initial video module as the sort of the springboard to become a master in the subject. And so the way I sort of structure this is really actually five different components. So we've got the sort of the video modules first. But then I think it's a good idea to go and read the relevant portion of the textbook. But I mean, not just read it like skimming it. Read it like really analyzing it. Like, what, what and why are they saying these things? Do you have any questions? Where is this going in the future? How do you connect this to prior content and to other content that you know? What's the main point of this section? Why is each little detail valid? That's the kind of questions you should be thinking as you sort of read over this textbook. So use it as this introduction from me in the video lectures. And then you have to sort of do the deep dive in yourself through the section of the textbook, and, and that's on you. And then afterwards, I'm going to always create a, a bunch of practice problems so you have some chance to practice some problems and solutions will be posted. But I encourage you to try the problems on your own genuinely as if it was a test, but more importantly, just because to do mathematics, to learn mathematics, you have to do a lot of mathematics. You have to be sitting there trying problems because it's the problem-solving skill that we're really trying to go for, more so than just the answer. So me providing you solutions isn't all that helpful, although I will. But what I want is for you to focus in on is you try to do the mathematics yourselves. And at the end of every unit, I'm going to have an online homework and you're going to have some system through Blackboard where you're going to be able to submit the problems that you've worked on into Blackboard and then I'll be able to grade them. And that sort of will be the sort of dramatic finish of each individual module. 
So that's the four components, but the fifth one is going to be the Piazza Forum. And my hope is that we're going to create quite a bit of a community here. And the Piazza Forum can be for whatever you like. If you've got questions on the videos, on the practice, on the readings, and even on the homework, although they'll be a little bit more strict on uh, making sure that we've, we've got academic honesty on that point. But, but for all these different components, you can ask what questions you want, and I will sometimes see the discussion for questions for you, and we have to have a lot of interaction. And indeed, if you have a lot of interaction, then I'm going to give a little bit of credit for this. It's about 2% of your final grade. It's just not a huge amount, but just a minimal amount over the course of the semester that you're going and helping each other out and working on problems together. So I'm excited. Uh, I think we've got an opportunity for a pretty good course here. I hope that you're going to be excited. I think discrete mathematics is really a, an interesting field and, and an important field for people in IT, which is what a lot of you presumably are going to be. And uh, let's just work on that together. And uh, good, good luck, for sure.